Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk a little bit about the year 2024, um, how it went career-wise. Let's get into some of the nitty-gritties, some of the issues. Uh, more importantly, what do I do for a job? Right? I get a lot of people that ask this. Um, nobody really knows. It sounds like even people I've known for many years I've talked to, they go, oh, I didn't know you were doing X, Y, and Z, I thought you were doing something else. Um, so let's dive in a little bit to what I'm doing. I'll give you guys a little bit of insight uh, into the management side of things because I run my own department, as many people may know, may not know. Um, but I was gonna kick this off something with a little different here. Let's talk about my YouTube. I think it's called the Recall, Rewrap. Um, it's called Recap, YouTube Recap here, 2024. Um, I thought there was a few interesting slides here, and when I saw them come up, I was like, yeah, it's been one of those years. So YouTube has me here on, these were your musical moods. I listen to a lot of music while I program, so program throughout the week as well. Um, typically just at work, at home, I don't usually have the time. Uh, but biggest mood here is gonna be sad. I was 30% sad, 23% uh, reflective, 16% chill. 13% um, upbeat, 15% dramatic. Um, one of the other slides here at the beginning said, you're listening this year, it's giving like the types of moods, hyped, weepy, reflective, and country music. This does not surprise me. And I think most importantly, uh, artist of the year that I've listened to the most on YouTube was Zach Bryan. Um, personally on Spotify was Creedence Clearwater. So revival, if you know who that is, CCR. Whole other thing. Um, but Zach Bryan here, so getting into some country music as well. It has been a year. So let me just rewind here with what I do. So my official title is Vice President of Quantitative Risk and Research at Agora Data. When I list it, I list it as Head of Quantitative Risk and Research because I am the head. I run everything that is going to be quantitative risk and research. Now, what exactly does that mean? Um, my team is very small. Let me a little talk about here what Agora Data does. So when I say this, people assume we are a data vendor. Um, we are not. Um, an Agora, the term Agora is like a marketplace where people come to interact. That is why the company chose the name. Um, I think Agora itself was taken at the time as a company name. And so Agora Data was kind of the name that was selected. You know, we do a lot of things around data. So it makes sense that we are Agora Data. We make decisions off the data. We model off data. We build technology off data. Um, but Agora Data actually provides capital in technology um, to the auto finance industry. I'm just going to put it that way as a broad umbrella here. Now, if you guys know, I used to work for Santander um, back, man, it's been a while, for about five or six years, I think it's about six years, the majority of the time I spent on the auto division, so in the same space here. I also touched um, briefly other subprime consumables, so think about like buy here or buy now, pay later sorts of things before this was really trendy. Um, there was a whole marketplace for that. I've worked on mortgage products as well. Um, anyways, Done a bunch of different things, models, all that stuff at Santander. Uh, but at Agora Data, we're providing technology and capital. So when you think about like an auto dealer, or you think about like a finance institution, for example, like a smaller one, right? These smaller companies, they're not going to have like 10,000 employees. That's just not, you know, it's a, it's a dealership or it's gonna be a finance institution, right? They're not these massive behemoths like Wells Fargo, Ally, Capital One, Goldman Sachs. Um, they're not gonna have the sort of bandwidth to hire on a team of quants to build models, um, to make predictions. Uh, and so it's gonna be this challenging piece of like, you know, they want to focus on their main business, which is selling cars or financing vehicles. Um, and financing this sort of thing. Um, Agora Data actually provides all the modeling for that. That's the technology piece baked into that. There's more to the technology side as well. Um, it's providing access to data, providing summaries, providing information to them. Uh, there's a lot of really cool projects that are going on behind the scenes, you know, things, brainstorms that have been going on for years here. And I always constantly hear kind of things, you know, going around, um, trying to figure out where to position and where to put, you know, resources and time and money and all that. Um, but we, we provide models. One thing really cool we are focusing on here in 2025 is going to be, you know, everyone talks about SaaS. So no, not the statistical programming software. Uh, it's going to be, you know, software as a service. Uh, we are moving into 
a product here as mass, so models as a service or modeling as a service. And essentially that's the technology we're providing. So we are providing them the top notch models that we built, you know, my team has built it, a lot of other big global banks. Uh, we're bringing that technology into our expertise, modeling things out, providing these models uh, to dealers and to you know finance institutional groups here. And we're able to actually price them out and they're gonna have this you know, leverage here that they're going to be pricing things just like a big, massive behemoth with a lot of information on consumers uh, and a lot of high tech models to be able to get to some actual predictions of profits and losses. Um, and how do you make these and how do you set up the right deals and a bunch of other things we're working on in the back end of this. Um, so that's what we do. We provide that. We also provide capital as well. Right, so you're gonna go make a loan, you need someone to finance that, right? You're an auto dealer, just like when you walk into an auto dealership, right? Um, you can use their line of financing, which sometimes is internal. Sometimes you go through like Chase Bank, Bank of America, Ally, Capital One, like Santander. Someone's going to be the financing company on the backside of that, not the dealer. Um, Agora actually provides that capital as well here. So that's kind of what the business is. I'm not gonna get too much into the details of that because I don't know how much I can talk about, can't talk about. Um, again, I only work in my area, so there's gonna be you know blind spots. I don't know, maybe one day in the future we can do a really cool presentation and explain more what it is. But essentially, when we get into what my team actually does here, it's going to be the modeling um, piece of this and kind of the whole framework and realm around this. So uh, my team is very small. It has been three people, myself uh, and two other people for the most part, uh, for the last few years here. Um, we've made some changes. We've moved individuals from one team to another team. Um, I've brought in another individual to help backfill. Um, but my team does everything from, again, the model development process here. And we work heavily with the businesses to figure out uh, what sorts of problems they have. Can we model it? Do we have data for it? I spend a lot of my time looking at data. I spend a lot of my time complaining about data quality. Uh, right, ever I've gone, this is, it's always a thing that you do. You have to make sure your data is sound and solid before you model on it. You can't just blindly say like, hey, thanks for this awesome data, and then start modeling. You've gotta to talk to the business, you have to figure out the problem they have, intricacies of the unique business issue or problem. So often there's gonna be stuff in the data that's gotta get filtered and clean and processed before you get to that modeling stage there. Um, so we spend time working with the business side of this, and then we have model developers. So you can call them, I call them quants, right? We have quants, we build models. Um, so they have problems, they get data, they do processing, cleaning, and they put all this together. They build out these sorts of models for the businesses, and then they get into production. And then models go from you know that stage of model development into model implementation, which we call quant dev. Um, so I have somebody that just does quant dev that works for me. Um, and so I work very closely because our team is so small. It's me, the model developer, uh, in the quant dev we've got, the implementation. Um, and they optimize code. So I write out code, I send them code. I'm like, you know what, it's taken me X amount of months to get this model developed. We're in a timeline. Um, the developers have to hurry and jump now to the next project, right? And then that optimization of code, runtime platforms, technology, all gets dumped onto the quant dev. She's doing an awesome job here. I'm really excited about it. Uh, and she goes through and she says, Dimitri, you wrote this really you know, terrible code here. And you know, maybe the development team didn't do this about as good as they could have. And they optimize and they put like, you know, air handling around the model itself. Um, they do quality checks and validation of implementation for us as well. So they look at the model, they say, hey, uh, it handles missing values, it handles, you know, nulls, it handles all kinds of issues, but there's this one variable or this one piece that's not getting caught. Uh, then they'll come back to, you know, the development side and say, hey, how do we fix this real quick before we actually get this into full production um, on the tech side of this? And then finally, after we do implementation, that goes into the tech side of that. So that's really the model development, model implementation portion of that. I am also working unofficially as you know the boss, which is fine, but I'm really the model validation piece. Uh, when we have bigger models, I will often go through and write validation reports, and I will look through the process and look at the charts and look at the code. Uh, and sometimes I'll go back and challenge things that were done and say, I don't know if this was done quite right. And I'll run something on the back end. And then I write a report and I kick off and do the validation myself. So I'm kind of doing the validation piece and we're this really small, intricate team here. Now, that being said, when model development does stuff, they complain and say, Python's garbage. Well, they don't say that. They, they like Python. But Dimitri says, Python's garbage, and it doesn't do things very well. I need this faster. I need this better. Um, the work that was done was fine. It was passable with, you know, Python. 
but we need something custom. Um, so our quant dev is also working as quant research simultaneously. And so I have her actually helping me with building out tools, which is really a quant dev piece of this. Um, you know, make things better, make things faster, uh, make better tools, do more math. Um, that's what they're really doing on that end of that. And I think this year we've, we're just starting to get there. We're starting to get traction on this. Um, back to the YouTube moods. Um, I've been sad and weepy and reflective and frustrated because the biggest thing I have to do is not actually building all these models. Um, it's actually building a team. And building a team is the hard part, right? I've built models in a career. If I have everything I need, I can shut the world out. I can sit down at my my desk back here and I can code and I can build you out models pretty fast. Um, but building teams, putting the pieces together, uh, making other teams work with my team and making my team work well with other teams. And you know, as I've talked about before, there's the quant pipeline, it's getting data and data quality in, it's working with the business on the front end of the problems, then it comes finally to your team, then it comes to implementation, which is my team, and then it goes out to the actual you know platforms, the products that they're getting put into at the end, and then talking to the businesses at the end again and saying, hey, is this even working for what you want? And then we do all the risk management on top of that, which is gonna be model monitoring, which is fine, but the hardest part, the reflective part, the thing I am struggling with uh, is going to be the management of building out the team. This has been extremely hard for me. The other piece has been time management. So again, we're running a lot of things with only a few people. I am the head of the department, so I'm strung out just doing way too many things. I have needed to make a hire for two years now. It's been a challenge. And so finally I broke down and I had a recruiter help us. So shout out to Zach, a big thank you to him. I'll link him above or below at an interview with him here a while back. Um, and I was like, Zach, we chatted uh, on the podcast. I can't do this anymore. Um, <laughs> I don't have the time. I don't have the resources. Uh, I don't wanna do the recruiting part of this, which is again, part of the job I have to do please go find me someone. Um, so Zach went out and we hired Zach and Zach has found some great talent here. Um, so my team is going to be growing here as Jan in January, we're going to have another individual joining um, again, someone to help lead the model development more so I can step back into the research side. Um, and more importantly, the team building and team management and strategic direction of these teams and get us all on the right track and moving in the right direction here. So to give you an example of this, because I know it's hard to understand if you're not in management, um, Dimitri, build model. So I have model on my desk I need to build, for example, the last few weeks, which I haven't really done. Um, so I know this is awful. So my mid-year review, I ranked myself as awful because I don't personally feel like we are getting, we aren't getting there. We're not, you know, Dimitri wants to run. I don't want to screw around with things. Um, but what happens is I have the model sitting on the desk and I get down and I'm, you know, get my Python up and I get my Anaconda up uh, and I get my spider loaded and I get data running in and, and I'm starting to go through this code. And then it's like, I've got training that's due for the end of the year. I haven't done my, my compliance training. So I gotta get that done. Um, and I wanna take some time off this month. So I'm like, all right, I'll get this done real quick. I get that done. Um, and then, you know, annual reviews are due. My annual reviews were due on November 30th. I had my annual reviews <laughs> a couple days ago, I think Thursday on the 5th. So Dimitri's in trouble now too, because I'm behind on my annual reviews. So I'm trying to get that done. Um, we're putting uh, bonuses and raises together for the week as well. So I'm getting files sent in. I'm working with, you know, management and accounting. I'm getting all the files, the documents, the paperwork. Then I got to get my annual reviews put in here at the system and sync all this stuff up and make a case. Um, and then if I want any promotions or anything, I have to go through that process of, you know, submitting the document, the paperwork. Um, even if I get like the, yeah, that's great. You know, here's a promotion. I'm still like thinking in my head, I need to make sure I document out the information because, you know, it's management, right? It's, you just, you don't want something to come back to you in six months or 12 months and somebody says, hey, this person got um, promoted unjustly. And you're like, no, they did an amazing job. Like my team's great, we got it approved, right? I still wanna make sure I have all the list of the notes for that. So I've gotta do that. And then I've got a paper I'm working on too that was a goal for the year. So KPIs, key performance indicators for my team was I needed to publish, I think at minimum the one paper I set back in like February or March. Uh, it's done, kind of, but it's not approved. So I now have to go through the process of having it reviewed and approved and it needs to go through compliance to make sure you know 
I'm not giving away any secret sauce of the business. Um, and I really want to get this pushed out the door. And so I'm, you know, messaging people back and forth and trying to get these th sorts of things set up. And then we had a company party on Friday. <sighs> I don't know. And then I've had a few other just fire drills pop up. Somebody needs something. We had reporting that was going through that I was behind on. Um, they had a meeting. I missed the deadline. I'm trying to get the reporting done. Uh, my team is only, again, three people. Somebody else who used to help with it on a different team is no longer there, and we're transitioning it to my team. And so I wake up, and I'm looking at my calendar on Friday, and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Um, when I was working on that model, I signed on and got partway through the run, looking at the logic of it, and then got derailed. Um, and I've had this happen three or four times in the last week, and so I didn't really make much progress. So I'm always like, all right, next week, next week, that, that model is going to get built. Uh, and then other fire drills happen, right? I mean, I'm getting hit with, you know, planning for conferences for next year. Uh, we have the quaint quant, quant conference here in Dallas. We're trying to figure out, I would love to do it at a bigger venue. I'd love to team up with a university. I mean, I'm getting all these ideas in my head and it's like, no, 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 no. pump the brakes, pump the brakes. Uh, I still got to build models, right? That's <laughs> I'm really being paid to build models. The team's paid to deliver models. Um, but there is a lot of other management pieces and things that have to get taken care of. And even up with us building models, right, I still have to go work with all the business halves and the business units on, you know, Dimitri, uh, you know, help with strategy for this, that, and the other. Can't say exactly what we're working on, but uh, we have all these things you need to get, you need to have opinions on. You need to turn to meetings for this. You, you need feedback on this. You need input on this. And so it's great, right? You need to get involved. You need to make sure you are uh, managing the framework and the environment around your team because all these decisions company-wide impact your team in some way, shape, or form. Um, whether it's, you know, us on the intake of things or us on the outtake of things, right? So we're pulling in data and quality you know, documentation, business logic, uh, looking at that, looking at strategy, for example, and then going out with even strategy coming in, strategy going out. I'm um, looking at products going out, looking at deliverables, looking at how the models are impacting people, looking at model monitoring, which is coming back in from the output of the model. Um, so you have, I have this chaotic 2024 here. And unfortunately it was just, it was that YouTube, you know, theme here. It was a little sad, a lot reflective, uh, I'm trying to get all the pieces put together here. I, th I think I've, I've almost got it nailed down. I think if we can get the team grown to the right size. I get the right people in the right places. Um, then I can really focus on the pieces that I'm, you know, I can do that other people can't do. Uh, so that is going to be the big drive here in 2025. Um, so again, quant work, been doing awesome. But we are just it's hard getting that, you know, traction and getting the pipeline set up. Once we get things rolling, I think it will be just an awesome, you know, like everyone's busy, everyone's heads down. We're getting a lot of results here. Uh, and so 2025, I'm really pushing for that. But 2024, to be honest with you guys, has been a rough year for me career-wise. Um, I have struggled just to get all the pieces put together. So anyways, that is my update here. That is what I actually do. That is somewhat what Agora Data does as well. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time. Mm -hmm.